At the moment of death, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said in a very long and lengthy hadith, and I won't say the whole thing, but he, he said in, in, in this long hadith in details what's going to happen to the person. And he divided the people into believers mm -hmm. and disbelievers. Yeah. And he said, when the person is about to start his hereafter, because the hereafter starts with the moment of death, mm -hmm. and he's departing from this life, if, if he's a believer, the angels will come to him from the heavens and with bright faces and they would sit with him as long as his eyes can see and this is reality this is more real than the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm looking at you and you're looking at me so at that moment he would see the angels sitting lining up all the way to the to, to what his eyes can see and then the angel of death there's an angel responsible for taking the souls of the human being the angel of death will come down and he would sit in front of him and he would order the soul and he would say to the soul, to the believing soul, go out with, to the mercy and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the soul will come out as the Prophet ﷺ said in the meaning of which, like a drop of water coming out from the opening of a water skin. See how easy and soft that happens. This is the soul of the believers come out in such an easy way. So once the soul comes out of the believer, the hadith says, Again, this is not opinions. This is the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, revelation from Allah. Once the soul come out, the rest of the angels, they don't leave it in the hands of the angel of death. They would take it and they would wrap it in a coffin from Jannah, from paradise, that has the best fragrance and the best smell. And they would take it and they would go and elevate to the heavens with the soul. And every heaven that they would go to, sky and levels, we know that there's seven heavens or seven skies, they would take the permission and the angels would say, who is that person with the best names that he used to be called in this world? Why? Because of the great smell that they are smelling and the great thing that, that is happening. So they would say, it's so and so, the son of so and so, with the best names that he used to be named in this world. And they go from one heaven to the other till they reach the seventh one. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say that write the deeds of my slave in the highest level. This is for the believers and return his soul back to the earth because I promised them that from the earth I created them and from the earth they shall return and from the earth they shall be resurrected. So the soul will come into the body again in the earth but not just in the same way that we are living now. And then after he is buried, then and people depart from his grave and the Prophet ﷺ, he said that he would hear the footsteps of the people when they're departing, the dead person. Yes, brothers and sisters, you and I are going to know when the people put us in that box and put us in the grave, we are going to know. Your spirit is gone. You can't shout. You can't call out. You can't say, don't leave me here. But you're going to be hearing and you're going to be seeing because that's a different kind of consciousness. But you can't move. Then after they leave, the angels of death or, or two angels will come to him and these two angels will make him sit in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best we're not talking about physical things here and they would ask him three questions and this is what is very important for us to realize now that this is what we prepare ourselves for do we have answers to these three questions or not and the answers is not just what we know is how our life was they would ask him who is your Lord what is your religion and who is the messenger that was sent and the believers they would say when they asked who is your Lord they would, he would say Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth and who is what is your religion he would say submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth which is Islam and who is the, your, your prophet he would say prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that moment he will be opened a gate in front of him to the hellfire to the hellfire and it would be said to him this was supposed to be your place if you would have been a disbeliever. But it was replaced for you by another place and then a gate to the paradise will be opened to him and the fragrance and the goodness from the paradise will come into him and he, it will be said to him that this is your place when the day of judgment would occur but not now. So at that moment he would say, 
Oh Allah, oh Allah, make the hour occurs. He wants it to happen quickly so that I can go back to my family and my wealth, meaning to enter the paradise. And the total opposite is for the disbelievers. And let me just start it by, I know I'm taking too long, but for the disbelievers, the Prophet ﷺ gave the example that it would make it more closer into our minds. He said, when a disbeliever is about to die, the angels of punishment will come down unto him. And they are the most horrific looks, these angels' creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angel of death, also they would sit in front of him as far as his eyes can see. The angel of death will come and then he would say, ordering the soul to come out and he would say, come out to the punishment and the anger of the creator of the heavens and the earth because you had committed injustice against your own self when you did not fulfill the purpose of your life. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said at that moment, the soul would scatter all over the, the body of this disbelief. Doesn't want, to Doesn't want to come out. So what happens, the angel of death would snatch it, would pull it so hard that it would be so much, of course, painful. And the Prophet ﷺ gave the example that it, as if it's touring the person, tearing it, tearing him, like you have a piece of iron in a wet wool. What happens to it? It just tears it apart. Is that from being attached to this world and not having been prepared for the next Definitely. life and neglecting your obligation? state of forgetfulness and the state of disbelief. Yeah. And, and it becomes all over the place. It does not, see, remember the first example? Mm -hmm. It comes out like a drop from a water skin. Very easy and You're very ready. soft. Right. But the disbeliever, he had to do this to it. And then when it comes out, the angels would wrap it in a coffin that is from the hellfire that has the worst smell to it. Mm. And when it's tried to go up into the heavens, it won't be able to. And the angels for the first heaven, it will say, who is this nasty and, and bad smell? Yeah. Uh, human beings, it would be said so and so, the son of so and so, with the worst names that used to be named in this world. And then it would say, or something would be said that bring him back to this earth and it would be thrown into the earth again. And when the angels would come to the person after they depart, after they burying him, the two angels would come and make him sit and ask him the same three questions. Who is your Lord? That person would say, ha, ha. this is what the hadith says. Ha, ha, I do not know. I heard people saying things. He, didn't prepare he, was, he was not preparing himself. Yeah. He was busy with the sin and the disobedience of the creator of them. He heard people saying, come, worship the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. They advised them. They told them so many times. But he was busy with intoxicating himself. And he, was, he will be asked, what is your religion? He would say, ha, ha, I do not know. I heard people saying things. Who is your messenger? He would still not able to answer. Although he might know it, but the tongue would only speak of what was present in the heart. And then it will be opened for him a gate to paradise, to Jannah. And it will be said to him that this was supposed to be your place if you were a believer. See how much regret a person would have when he sees this. And then a gate to the hellfire will be opened and it will be said to him that this is your place and all the, the bad things will come to him from the hellfire and he would say, Oh my Rabb, Oh my Lord, do not make the hour occurs because now he knows that he's going to the punishment of Allah. And he has to live with this everlasting without no end. Because of what? Because of few years that a person lived in a state of disbelief and forgetfulness. And let me just add something. Somebody might say, isn't that a form of injustice that a person lived 60, 70 years in state of disbelief and then he has to live everlasting life? You know, why is that much? Yeah. To answer this is, for someone that lived and died in the state of disbelief, he had the intentions while he was living that if he would live forever on the face of earth, he would live forever in the state of disbelief. So as a result of this attitude, that he, his punishment is everlasting. Allah is the most just. And he would not punish anyone unless the matter is made clear to him. And as Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رسولا. We do not punish till we send a messenger. This is the mercy of Allah. Messengers are being sent. And they sent to tell you, oh you human being, mm -hmm. you believe in God, worship Him alone. And then you turn away. You worship other than Him. You live a life of forgetfulness. You don't want to do nothing with with being set fast on the, on the proper submission to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And do not blame no one but your own self. Then do not blame no one but your own self. Then do not blame no one but your own self.